At the end of our six day in the Maldives, we flew from Malé Airport to Colombo, as on this adventure, Sri Lanka was our main destination. We spent two weeks there, traveling around. This first video will be about arriving in Colombo, spending the night in Negombo, in an amazing guest house, traveling towards Sigiriya, stopping on the way in Dambula, visiting Sigiriya, and going on a safari. We will also taste at first hand Sri Lanka, the kindness of its people and all their delicious food. So let's get to it. Passage, can't we stay here? <laughs> From Malay to Colombo, it's a short two hour flight. After seeing one final time the Maldives, it was time to get ready for more adventurous travel. Once landed, we headed out, got our bags and then met our driver. Our host organized a transfer from the airport. Also, we would recommend you exchanging money right away at the airport. The rate isn't bad at all and later it will not be that easy to exchange money. We didn't do it right away and then were struggling from time to time to find an ATM with good rate or even an exchange office. It was a first fun ride discovering the local way of driving. We opted to stay in Negombo rather than Colombo because it was actually closer to the airport and had a better location to continue towards Sigiriya. When we arrived at our accommodation, we met our host, Kenef, with whom we had booked dinner as we knew we would arrive late. <laughs> You're vegetarian, no spicy? <laughs> no, it's fine. Yes. Uh, it's spicy, no? No, it's not spicy. No spicy. Yeah. yeah. It's I think one to five. I said uh, one, but I could have said zero or minus two would have been okay. <laughs> okay. Then the uh, dinner is here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. After validating the spiciness level of dinner, he showed us our room, which was really dreamy and really comfortable. The garden also looks amazing. Look. Yeah. And all around, it's only garden. It's a shame that we don't stay uh, longer here. Yeah. Uh -huh, you can't see me. Yeah, there is a map of the garden. Did you see? Like it would be tomorrow morning would be nice to go. Okay. Well, after breakfast? Yeah, after breakfast. <laughs> Once settled in and after a shower, we went for dinner, discovering another beautiful part of the guest house. After a little welcome drink, it was time to taste our first Sri Lankan food. There we also met a French couple that was ending their trip. It was nice chatting with them and as they still had some local currency, they exchanged it with us. That was life saving and cheery. First time Sri Lanka? Yes. Good? Okay. So we are going to Sri Lanka? No, 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 ah. not all. Then you make some uh, space, uh -huh. then bring the curry. Uh -huh. This one? Yeah, this one and uh -huh. everything. Okay. Just a little and mix, uh, mix with the uh, rice. Okay. Then, then you can uh, make a different flavor uh -huh. and different taste. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Once our tummy full with all the delicious food, it was time to retire for the night. The next morning, we woke up to a beautiful weather and an amazing environment. After doing yoga and meditation, we went around the garden and took our time admiring it. It is not every day that you are in a Japanese guest house in Sri Lanka. The story behind that is that Kenneth lived in Japan and when he opened his guest house, it was meant for Japanese. But due to Covid, he had to list it for everyone.
It was then time for breakfast, which was really yummy. All right, so uh, Sri Lanka, 44th country, officially starts today after uh, what they would call a bit spicy breakfast, which was burning. I think for both of us, like one of them, wow. So let's get a. Uh, so, yes, we are slowly getting ready for what's coming ahead. We had also organized a driver to bring us to Sigiria through our accommodation, so it was time to leave. It takes around 3 to 4 hours to reach Sigiria. And on the way, we organized to make a stop in Dambula to visit the cave and golden temple. Which is about three hours away. Speeding and plus he took over. And well, got stopped by the police. <laughs> Along the road, we started seeing the beauty of Sri Lanka. We must admit, we love nature there. The vegetation and all the greeneries are breathtaking. We first visited the cave temple. After climbing a few steps, the view started to be gorgeous. Well, it's not that uh, far. There isn't that many steps, but boy, it's hot. Oh, look. To visit the temple, we had to remove our shoes and rent scarves. Only one person, hundred, okay? Later, two hundred. Oh. The temple is really breathtaking. It is the largest and best preserved cave temple complex in Sri Lanka. The caves we visited contain statues and paintings related to Gautama Buddha and his life. There were a total of 153 Buddha statues, 3 statues of Sri Lankan kings and 4 statues of god and goddesses. And all the murals covers an area of about 2100 square meters. Once out, we walk to the other part of the complex where a temple is located as well as a museum. Our next destination was then Sigiria, where we stopped on the way for lunch at Lia restaurant and where we ordered a vegetable curry with roti. There, the kids owner chat with us and even offered a chocolate to Tina because it was his birthday. Then we headed to our accommodation. 
We opted for a guest house near Lion's Rock. We must say that the owners were super friendly and helped us with everything we needed. Plus, the room was simple yet really comfortable. We rested a bit during the warm hours and then got our first tuk-tuk and went to Pindurangala Rock for sunset. Our host organized the tuk-tuk, so it was great not to have to negotiate the price. Plus, the same tuk-tuk will pick us up later. It was so convenient. And the driver really friendly and talked a lot with us. We then hiked to the top of Pindurangala Rock where the entrance fee was 1000 rupee per person. All right. So, so this is the temple or not? Yeah, I think it's a temple because then after you can remove the scarf to remove your shoes if you want to enter. No, I just want to see how it is. I mean. So apparently the beginning it's easy because it's on its uh, stairs. And then there is a park where you kind of kind of have like to climb on rocks so it was a nice and easy hike at the beginning following a somehow made trail. However, the end of the trail could be a bit tricky. Straight, there, up there, straight there, and then you go there towards the opening. You good? If you can. No, 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 no. Oh, 80 now. Okay. Once on the top, we enjoyed the view towards the Lion Rock, and waited for sunset. While waiting, Tina almost got a small backpack stolen by a monkey. I just managed to grab it before the monkey got it. One piece of advice, be really careful with the monkey and never try to touch them. There we also met a French girl, Lily, that was traveling for a year and ending her trip in Sri Lanka. We chat together while waiting for sunset. We then headed down the Pindurangala Rock, took our tuk-tuk back, stopped in a supermarket and then went for dinner at Tawula restaurant. Portions were huge. One dish could have been enough for both of us. Look at that curry, boy. The next morning, we were served a huge breakfast with toast, eggs, fruit, yogurt, crepes, and so on, which is actually what locals are eating for their tea time. A real Sri Lankan breakfast would be curry and rice. Once ready, we got a tuk-tuk to Lion Rock. On our way there, our driver told us that a Canadian tourist was attacked by an elephant sooner that week, early morning while walking to the Lion Rock with her husband, and that she had been transferred to the hospital in emergency. After withdrawing money in an ATM that actually had quite good rates, we got our tickets 
who didn't know, but we could have actually paid there by CB. One ticket costing 36 USD. We then visited the museum, where it wasn't allowed to record. However, it was great, as we learned a lot about the Lion Rock, an ancient rock fortress located on a massive column of granite approximately 180 meter high. We then started walking toward the main site. On our way, we saw lots of beautiful lotus flowers and a giant squirrel. That was super cool. Now that we are walking toward the rock, here is some history. According to the ancient Sri Lankan chronicle, this area was a large forest. Then, after storms and landslides, it became a an hill and was selected by King Kashyapa for his new capital. He built his palace on top of the rock and decorated its side with colorful frescoes. The capital and the royal palace were abandoned after the king's death. It was used as a Buddhist monastery until the 14th century and today is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It was time to climb up. The site is in really good condition and the stairs quite alright all the way up. After a little traffic jam around the road, we made it to the top. We must say that we really enjoyed it and found it quite worth it. We were wondering if it would be worth the 72 USD we paid and in the end yes. After walking around the top for a while, we then took the stairs back down, visited the cave with fresco on it and once at the parking area took our tuk-tuk back to our accommodation. We then went for lunch at Mr. Cafe in Coffee and Eatery. Yes, you, you always mixed everything. Uh, yes. Uh. The, you want to well mixed all together? Okay. And then and then went back to our accommodation to rest a little bit before the next adventure starts. In the morning, we asked our hosts to book a safari for us. There are actually three national parks near Sigeria, where elephants are roaming wild. Kaudula, Mineria and Urulu Eco Park. In the morning, our host checked where the elephants were, and it was in the Eco Park. So, that's where we went. And so, the safari started by reaching the entrance of the national park. First safari in the Eco Park in Sigeria. Entrance ticket was a little bit less than uh, 5,000 for two and the ticket is 12,000 and is private. So after what half an hour, 40 minute ride, we are not even from our accommodation to the national park. Our driver got a ticket for us, opened the roof and now we start the safari. We then started exploring the national park.
Quickly, we saw our first elephant, but they rapidly went back to the forest. The chase continued, and we spotted another one. But then nothing anymore. So our driver told us to go for a little hike to a viewpoint. We then hopped back on the jeep and continued. You are never boring. <laughs> After a while, we saw another elephant. This time, we really had time to admire it. We continue and at some point we were almost alone and started seeing a few of them moving. And all of a sudden, elephants were coming from everywhere. And they even had two little ones with them. Seven elephants at the same spot with two babies. Two babies. We continue to another spot where we found another group of elephants, and so on. Wow, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so apparently one of the jeep there is broken. Rasich, did you see elephant? I saw a lot of elephants. Did you see baby elephant? Yeah, I saw babies. They are fun. Well, two of them. There were two of them, no? Yeah. Yeah, one uh, really, really baby and the other one, I would say it's a toddler. Maybe the baby one was poppy. <laughs> because we like to think <laughs> that poppy became an elephant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
it's easier to explain to our minds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of uh, the thing that we were thinking. That Poppy sold, that Poppy couldn't be, I mean, was born, but couldn't be alive, but then the baby elephant was uh, born instead. And we saw him today. Okay, some quick fact about the elephant here. So they sleep three and a half to four hours a day. They drink uh, once a day morning. Uh, they drink water once a day in the morning from a big pound. And then they eat during the day uh, 50 kilograms of grass. And apparently the best time to see them, it's late afternoon. Because they are, well, at, at noon, the end of morning, noon, it's too hot, so they are hiding. And that's why when we started like the safari, we couldn't see much, uh, many of them. But now that it's like uh, past 4 p.m., we are seeing a lot of them. And slowly, it was time to exit the national park and return to our accommodation. Once back we went for a little walk and ended in SLK coffee where we got the best curry and go to ever freshly made huge and so so delicious and that was the end of our time in Sigiria as the next day we left for candy <laughs>